Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Those who are behind me, we appreciate you being here. Uh, our purpose here tonight, in the next 30 minutes, is to discuss uh, the dredging project there on Lambs Creek. Uh, more specifically, to the uh, to the letter that was written several weeks ago. Uh, that letter has, I believe, been on our website for some time. So, hope everybody had an opportunity to read that. Um, just some comments from me uh, to get started, and then we can, Carrie, if it's all right, we'll just move to you and, and go around the table until we, is Bud with us, by the way? He should be with us via phone. Okay, all right. Um, there was an email that I got uh, today, actually this morning, and I just want to, to read part of this to the group behind me and, and to council. Um, <laughs> find out where the period is. Um, this, this, is, this is supposedly a quote. I only learned of this opportunity today and have heard city council may be opposed to the dredging of the project. I have spoken to my neighbors regarding this project and some of them do not support it. Um, council may be opposed to the dredging project because, quote, that you indicated that the land, uh, excuse me, that the uh, property owners on Lambs Creek did not support the project. It did not come from me. I don't know where that came from, um, but it did not come from me. I have been um, dealing with emails and phone calls. There are several people behind me right now that I've talked to and brought them up to date on every move that this council has made regarding this project. So I don't know where that came from. It's unfortunate that it's in there, um, but I want to get that out of the way first. These are my reasons for concerns. Uh, Lamb Street dredging project, uh, and then Carrie, after I get finished, if you would take it from there. Uh, first concern is if the city moves forward with this project, we'll be setting an expectation that the city will also dredge uh, other areas in the city. Uh, in this case, your county is offered to take the lead on engineering and contract procurement, and also the management of the project. For other future projects, the city would need to add staff and we also need to, to con contract for project-related services. Um, that's, that's not only a concern of mine, that is a concern of most of council, and it is, is also the, um, some of the folks behind me uh, had, it, had that same feeling. Uh, how, would, how would the project be funded? No member of council has indicated they support using general, fund budgets, uh, general budget funds for the project. Several members of council have also expressed they do not support the special tax district or the concept or the proposed participation threshold. Future grant funding concern, I did have a conversation uh, uh, with a gentleman from, uh, that, that is on Lambs Creek this afternoon. Um, he did indicate that a family member did have some, um, uh, what was actually a, a grant writer uh, and would certainly be on the lookout for a grant that may help this situation. Um, I, nobody, I have not talked to that lady, and I don't think anybody on council has talked to her either, uh, so I'll wait to hear from her. There are no grants that the staff is aware of to pay for this project, and should your county uh, identify a grant which would pay for all the project expenses, then we would certainly be open to restarting discussions for the joint project. Um, one thing that I am totally against, and I think council, <coughs> that I, um, I think council will, will discuss this further tonight. But we are having a budget presentation tonight. Uh, we we've got some capital projects that are backed up for years that we need to get you know we need to get moving on these things, and they benefit those, those projects benefit everyone in this community. Um, so I would absolutely be opposed to spending our capital project money on a dredging project. Um, and with that said, uh, Kerry, we'll go to you and then we'll go around the table and 
we will be finished with that. Again, this the, our, our action uh, Jane, on, can you on the agenda tonight. Is that Bud? That's Bud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Bud, did you? I'm sorry, Bud. Did you want to say something? Uh, no, no, Gordon. Uh, I'll I'll wait my turn. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, Carrie. Well, I'm uh, I'm not opposed to dredging, but I am opposed to city funding dredging. Uh, we've got 87 miles of shoreline we have out in our economic development folders that we brag about, and if we started a dredging project by 87 miles, that would uh, take I suspect probably billions of dollars, and. There have been some good suggestions about grant funding and things like that, which I think if uh, the people that want this, we get together and see if they can come up with uh, funding and hire a private uh, contractor. I think that would be, I, I would support that. Okay, Keith. Oh, okay, thank you. Hope I'm being heard. Um, I started looking at it from the perspective <clears throat> Uh, at home conversations of what is the city supposed to do? What is our function as a government? Uh, and having looked at the uh, budget things in the last year, I, I came across this one line that says, the city of Pocosa provides a full range of services, including police and fire protection, the maintenance of highways, streets, and other infrastructure, recreational activities, library services, community development activities, and cultural events. The city also owns and maintains sewage facilities, contracts for trash pickup and disposal, recycling, landscaping, and bulky items, owns and operates a city pool and manages various paid recreational activities. I, I had tried to figure out where dredging would, of a creek would fall in there, and I basically could not find it um, to myself. I, so I'm just going, we do all that for 12,500 people what we got here on the budget we have about $40 million and this project would take about $2 million, which however it's funded, and I agree with what you put down when you were talking about the funding aspect of it. So I started shaking my head. Um, the things that come to light that not everybody really seems to think about when they do this was uh, what I call other issues is that it'll be 48, 40, excuse me, 46 months based on this plan that we've been looking at <coughs> from the time we say go. Costs do not include driveway channels. Those are the channels that are basically from the dock into the main channel that will be dredged. These will not be combined with any other, with any channel dredging. In other words, we won't have a contractor do channel dredging. That'll be something that comes after the channel is dredged, if it dredges at all. The current plan presumes a close by dewatering area, which we don't know if that's gonna exist, which will save millions of dollars according to the reports I read. Other issues, and you mentioned as a precedent, any other waterway considering a similar project will have to pay for the engineering fees that your county is nicely providing in this particular case. Um, we did receive an email this afternoon that had a presentation in it that talked about um, environmental impacts and the improvements that, that would be good for us. Uh, so I started thinking, having read that over a couple hours and trying to figure out what all it meant, but I thought, Maybe should we should be looking at this dredging project from the environmental perspective rather than recreational, because everything we've had so far is purely recreational. <clears throat> and if so, what kind or type of dredging is best for that? Uh, would it satisfy both purposes and at what cost? So if we looked at it from the environmental perspective, as that presentation said, I uh, was pushing for it, it may be different than what it would be for recreational. It may be completely you know, less expensive, may not be as deep, maybe wider perhaps, um, or whatever. No one's ever looked at the environmental impact of that. Uh, will dredging have any impact on wildlife? Will not dredging have any impact on wildlife? Uh, in, in perspective of what we're looking at and seeing those photos, which I've been down there and looked at it real time anyway. In 2014, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board looked at a possible kayak launch at Amory's Wharf. Uh, it would have had to be placed out 399 feet from the shore due to the shallow water depth caused by sediment buildup. So it's not just 
sediment buildup, as Gary was referring to, uh, at that particular peak, it's all around the coast. And so, no easy solution there. Uh, I have no real problem with the dredging either. I do have a problem with 12,450 people paying for it for the benefit of some others. Okay, thank you. Jen? Um, so, I just wanted to acknowledge some of the concerns of the citizens, because I think that's important. Um, you know, that some of the things that I've heard is, you know, it, it's not going to just be this one. Eventually, you know, will all our creeks start drying up, getting sill filled? people in the person can't have boats. Now that might be 20, 30, 40 years long after we're not on council anymore. But I think it's something that eventually the city's going to have to face because if that's our draw and that starts going away, you know, that like you talked about, an environmental thing, you know, just something to think about for the future. Um, York County is willing to pay part of this which could be the only project that we ever get help with. Um, and from an environmental perspective, you know, I think if over time, Gerson does have to start looking at our waterways are getting dried up and we have to do something to help it, um, can we meet our TMDL credits? We have to spend money to meet those, I'm assuming, right, Randy, in some capacity sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the TMDL, as council is aware, we're utilizing the credits available from the HRSD SWIFT program okay. to meet our TMDL obligations. Okay. All right. As are the other jurisdictions in our region. Okay. So that was my question is could any future dredging, if it came up, be used to meet those? But if we're already meeting them, that's what I'm hearing you say. That's correct as it relates to TMDL. But okay. the, the underlying issue would it could still potentially additionally help. Additionally help that, okay. Um, and the other thing that I've heard from citizens is, yes, doing a project like this would not benefit others, but improving the schools doesn't benefit me. I don't have any children in the schools, neither do the playgrounds, neither, you know, there's lots of other projects that are done for the benefit of citizens that not all citizens benefit from. So I just wanted to recognize that those are some of the concerns of citizens. Um, I had written down some of the same things um, that some of my fellow council members have said. Personally, I don't have an issue with the letter because the letter doesn't commit us to anything. I mean, as I read it, it says that we will survey citizens to find out what their feelings are on a special tax district. Um, I would not want to impose a special tax district unless the majority of people were like, if the majority of people in Lands Creek said, yes, we want this, and we are willing to pay, or at least we're willing to find out how much it would cost as a special tax district, um, then, you know, the people have spoken. If they're not, um, then, they're, then they're not. Um, so I don't necessarily have a problem sending the letter forward unless I'm reading it wrong. It basically just says we would do a survey to see if our citizens are interested or not, which I think is an important piece of information to know because I know from being on the other side of city council, not everybody comes out and speaks. There's lots of people that for whatever reason don't choose to come here or don't send an email and so always the few people that come here aren't necessarily the representation of the whole. I would like to know what the people on Lambs Creek feel like because if it comes back and the majority, I mean, we've been told that 80% are in favor of it, but we don't know that. Maybe that's true. Maybe we do a survey and it comes back and we find out only 20% are, and then we can say, look, we've gotten the information, our citizens, only 20% in favor, we can't you know, York County, we're out, totally. We don't even want you to include us anymore. So for me, I think that's an important piece of information for us to know, but um, I am not in favor of a financial burden on this city with all the capital projects that we have. I think it would be wonderful if we could get grant money to do this. So in my opinion, 
unless we could get grant money that didn't burn the citizens, because we do have a lot of capital projects, police station, I mean, just a lot of things that need to be done in the city. Um, that would benefit the majority of citizens. So unless the people who this impacts would be open to a special tax district or we can find grant funding, that I wouldn't necessarily be in favor of it. But I am in forward, I am in favor of sending the letter forward and I am in favor of finding out for sure what everybody in Lambs Creek feels about a special tax district so that we know, yes, they want it or no, they don't for certain and can make decisions based on that. Okay, Dave. Thank you, Gordon. Yes, sir. Throughout most of my lifetime, going back to the 1970s, I've been up and down most of the creeks, the vast majority of them, I would say, around this peninsula that we call home at one time or another. And I can speak from personal experience that, that most of the vast majority of those creeks that I've been up and down, the sand be dredged, and that's not a new concept. It goes back to my earliest recollections in the 1970s. So if we were to do, if we were to dredge Lamb's Creek, just to reinforce previous comments, it would obligate future city councils with no knowledge whatsoever of what future circumstances may be to dredge whatever other creeks and post explore the outside shore of the down Griffin's Beach, most anywhere you want to go. Um, also, the city of Pocosa does not own the bottom of Lamb Street or any of the other waterways, nor does it own the water that flows through those things. So my position on this all along, while I certainly acknowledge the existence of the problem, uh, I do not believe that the city is responsible for the Okay, Thank you. support this dredging for several reasons. <clears throat> One is the contractor is going to want to get paid as soon as he's done. And a special tax district is going to take years to recoup the money. So we are using taxpayer money to fund this thing that don't live anywhere near Land Street. And I think that's totally wrong. The other thing is we set the precedent for future councils. This dredge is not going to last forever. It's going to have to be redone. And that there are three man-made canals where I live that are going to silt in. And that's only a small part of what we have in the whole city of Pocosa. So we're really setting a dangerous precedent that could cost this city a lot of money. Uh, the other thing is, you go dredge a deep canal, a deep channel in Lambs Creek, we don't know how deep some of those pier pilings were driven. And all that silt that's around those pilings is going to go right to that hole we create. And so we, we run the risk of peers falling in, and who's going to pay for that? Uh, we're going to be responsible for it. So I, no, I, don't, I don't support it at all. Okay. Mr. Southall. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Gordon, I, I received a copy of the presentation that uh, I believe it was Jen, Jenny Kristen presented to us for us to look at. And I have to admit that I really didn't understand the view graph presentation all that well. It, it looked like it talked about environment. Uh, re relative to the project, I am concerned about how it really gets paid for. If it was all grant money, then I'd be willing to maybe to listen to what they wanted to do after a really good environmental study. Because when you, when you do something to drain water, uh, and, and that presentation talked more about drainage than anything else, uh, at, least, at least my interpretation of it was that. Uh, when you do things to increase drain water back to the river, it also lets water in much faster. And I would like to know whether an environmental impact statement would say that would cause more flooding in the city. And so I would want that to be looked at very carefully with the engineering stuff. The other thing is the proposal that we had before us to be talked about tonight uh, proposed a special tax district. And I am opposed to a special tax district because um, you levy taxes on people who really don't want it, might not want to use it, and in some cases there are people who just plain can't afford it. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not interested in running the first person out of the home because we raised their taxes too high. And so, uh, 
as it stands, I'm not interested in a special tax district to pay for it. If they get a, a, a gram or something to totally pay for it, then I'll be willing to listen to it after a thorough environmental study to make certain that we don't create more problems than we solve. Uh, one other issue is that when we had uh, people come talk to us before, everyone talked about their problem was that their boats uh, hit the bottom in the, in the mud of their piers. And the dredging doesn't go to the pier, so in order for, for them to really utilize the channels, they would have to get a private dredge all their own all the way out to the channels. Okay? And we'd be paying tax and forcing people to pay taxes for something that many of them still couldn't use in any case. Okay, Bud, thank you. Any other yes, comments? Sir. Any other comments? I have one. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Bud. Okay. I remember back on the 9th of August, a gentleman spoke to us <clears throat> about uh, Lambs Creek. Uh, he made a comment when in the quote here, when that creek was built, it was dug hand dug to six feet and it was put there for a reason. It was put there to drain neighborhoods because we're taking away wetlands and so we have to mitigate somehow. Now, if, and I asked the question then, are any lawns, any yards being flooded, are houses being flooded because of this problem? If so, I'd be the first one to get out with a shovel and help dig it. But if there's not a problem right now, we don't foresee it being a problem, I have a problem supporting it. I have no problem with the letter. I, I like the fact that we we're discussing the, the issue, and there's maybe things that I don't know that can come to light with the discussion with your county. But right now, I'm not really in favor of it. Okay. All right. Um, Carrie, I'm sorry. I was just going to comment about the number of people that would support it. Uh, since we don't know the total cost, there are a lot of people that would support it at two cents that would not support it at a quarter or 50 cents. And so until we can get a total cost, I don't think we can tell our people much about what, how much a special tax district would add to their tax bill. Okay, other comments? Okay, just for, for the folks that are, that are behind me, uh, we do appreciate you being here, and, and we're not going to set a clock on you. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to those that want to speak uh, under audience for visitors. Um, that's going to be the second item on our, on our agenda. And just to, to reiterate, this uh, vote that we're going to take tonight has, has to do only with whether or not we send this letter um, that Carrie just mentioned and Keith has mentioned, Jana mentioned it, uh, whether or not we send that letter, uh, forward that on to York County. So that. We're, we're not deciding dredging or not dredging. We're deciding whether or not we want to send the letter to your county for their consideration. Um, if the letter, in fact, does make its way to your county, then we would expect um, that your county would respond to us. Uh, as Randy and I, we spoke with those folks in your county, um, and they would respond to us as to what the next step might be. Um, I'm not going to support the, the letter, even though I played a role in, in drafting it. Um, I'm hoping tonight that we, we get a lot of input from the folks in, in, the, in the audience. Uh, there, I know there's a lot of things that I'm, I'm not aware of. Um, I, I could give you a total of, um, of how many people have told me they, they're not interested in the new tax district, how many people just flat don't want the dredging. Um, the, the only survey that I've seen was done by uh, a gentleman who lives in York County. We've not done one, nor has York County done one, uh, that I'm aware of. So what we will do is we will uh, we'll just discontinue the, uh, the work session, unless there are other comments, and we'll uh, listen to the folks that, that uh, live in that area that, that are concerned about this one way or the other, um, and what steps we may take from that. Okay. How about after that? Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, before you go, I, I want you to tell you that uh, I hear you clearly. I did not hear everyone uh, really clearly. So if people talk tonight, would you ask them to speak clearly into the microphones? The connection is really not the best. Okay. Good point. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir.
Good. Good. All right. Good evening, everyone. Again, uh, if you would stand, please. Uh, our Councilwoman Andrews will uh, lead us in our pledge. Excuse me. In our, she will give our invocation, and then she will lead us in our pledge. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here. We are Make decisions for the city and for our citizens. We are beyond grateful for our city employees uh, that work hard to keep the city running and our teachers who work tire tire tirelessly to teach our children, for our firefighters and policemen who recognize that for the hard work that these people do. Budget constrains us, and they are deserving of much more than we are capable of giving them for their service. We are grateful for our military and for the service that they give, who also, you know, put their life on the line for our country's freedom. We ask you to bless not only them, but their families to support them. Again, we are, are grateful for the opportunity that we have to Bless us with wisdom and guidance and the ability to hear our citizens and serve them in the best way possible. And we say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, first item on our agenda tonight will be our audience for visitors. <clears throat> and if there's anyone in the audience that has not filled out one of these uh, so that you can speak, please just raise your hand and someone will get you, uh, will get you one so you can fill it out. Okay, so we'll start. Yes. A couple of them got their hand. Okay. <laughs> Hey, why are they doing that? Uh, Faye, Wimmer, please. And if everyone would just pull the mic really close to you, we've got a member of council that is not with us, but he is. It's kind of in the room. Faye? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Faye Wimmer. I live at 141 Emmaus Road. And first of all, I would like to thank y'all personally for all you do to make it safe for us, for the really nice firemen and the wonderful first aid that comes by and picks you up when you can't help yourself, you know, to get to the hospital, and for taking care of the kids. But what I don't understand is why I live on the creek. I call it a creek because that's what it is right now. Uh, and we pay a percent higher taxes than the people across the street. And I always thought that was to keep the creek up so the fish could keep coming in and me catching them. And the crabs coming in. Now we get no crabs, we get no fish. All we get is mud. And it, it is really, really bad. And we can't, we go, we take the boat out. We have to go out a couple of hours before high tide. And you better make sure you back in before it gets low because you're going to be spending the night out there, honey. And so that's what we try to do. And another thought is some places I've been told that if they will dredge their creeks and their canals when they're, when we get like a hurricane, the water's got a place to go, and we won't lose as many houses as we lose and spend as much money repairing people's homes. And so that, that's another thought. But um, we're, really, we're really bad. I gave you some pictures of what it's yes, like, you know. And we pay taxes. We pay the extra money for the creek. And, hey, if I can go fishing, I'm all right with it. But if I can't, I'm not happy. 
um, I'll just go out and buy my fish and eat them in a restaurant. <laughs> but anyway, and then we pay taxes on the boat. So if we can't go fishing, we just sell the, sell the boat. And then there's tax money lost that we need to keep the firemen going and everything else. I mean, we got to stick together and look, look out for each other. I mean, you know, and trust God. And that's what we have to do. And right now, I am trusting God that this creek is going to be fixed to where the, the fish can come in and the crab can come back, you know, and we can go fishing and enjoy life. The few years we've got left. Thank you. Thank and you, Faye. Continue Fay. keeping up your good work. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, is it Dana or Dana Light? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm Dana Light. I live at 102 Freemore Drive. And uh, I've lived there, I've lived in Pocosa since 1982. I started out on Messick Road and uh, moved to um, Freemore uh, seven years ago, eight years ago. And I can tell a difference now from then in the um, depth of the water. The uh, little boat ramp down the street from two houses down, I used to be able to bring, if I had trouble with my boat, I could bring it <coughs> up there. Now it's impossible. I, I can't do it. And I bought a smaller boat, a 20-foot uh, Grady, uh, that, you know, it, it's not a real deep V, so, you know, I can, get in and out the best best I can during you know, the tides. And I may, I may have four or five hours. Um, so, you know, I know that the, the deal is that, well, there's lots of creeks in Bacosin and there's lots of uh, dredging to be done. But, you know, if we have York County that's willing to help with our creek. And it seems like from what I, that I've, that I've read, they are really, seems like they, they care about doing it and it, it, on their side. So I at least think we should do the letter because, um, you know, you might not ever get the opportunity again to uh, do it as cheaply. Uh, I realize that, you know, the rest of the coast and that doesn't live on the water, I realize, you know, they don't have an obligation to pay for us that live on the water and to dredge our creeks. And I'm willing to pay my share. You know, if it comes down to, I think the city, I would like for them to do their part and at least, you know, doing the letter, looking into it, and, and go from there. Um, you know, I realized that if it ever came to it, it would be the main creek that would be dredged. Uh, hopefully we can get grants. I don't know if we have to hire someone special for that or not. Um, but it just seems to me like the city of Bacosin, if they were to start anywhere with this problem, would be with Lamb's Creek. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I do ask that we do the list. Okay? Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jim Weltroth, am I close? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. I'm Jim Weltroth. I live at 300 Chinkapin Orchard. Um, what I'd like to do is summarize. Uh, from notes that I've prepared, and then I'd also like to address some of the issues that I heard from the working group meeting. Um, I'd like to start out by summarizing what's happened over the last 47 years. Uh, it was brought up in the working group meeting that the Lambs Creek, where I live on, was originally dredged in 1975. It was supposedly six feet deep. Some homeowners on there had boats, had sailboats over 40 feet long. So it was a sizable dredge, and it provided a lot of good boating capability for a number of years. However, 
it silted in tremendously, and I saw on your package that you just sent out that you've got some of the pictures. I've got other pictures of, of Pocosin in York County where it's even worse at low tides, <coughs> where there's no water in the creek, especially the ancillary channels. Um, in 1995, Mr. Kozak was a resident of Old Port Cove in York County. He worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to put together a dredging plan. To my knowledge, it did not include Pocosin or York County. Uh, and did not proceed much beyond the engineering drawing phase of that program, and for some, and made it some initial contacts with people between uh, Westover and Chinkapin Orchard, uh, people that live along that section of the creek. I retired from the Air Force in 1997. I decided to give up flying and get into boating. So I bought property on um, Lambs Creek, bought, a, bought my first boat, build a boathouse, and enjoyed boating on the Pocosin River and neighboring rivers for the next three or four years. Then we decided we wanted to go out on the bay, so I had to buy a bigger boat, a bay boat. That one, I'm, I made a mistake, that I was new to boating. I got one with an inboard outboard, and I was limited by how much I could raise the, the prop to avoid the silt that was already building up. After about three years, I had to get rid of that and trade up for a, uh, an outboard boat. Um, and that lasted for about 10 years. It had a much shallower draft, even though it was an ocean-going boat. And uh, then it started silting in. I had to take that boat over to Dare Marina for two years and store it over there. And then uh, three years ago, I sold the boat because it just wasn't economical to keep running it. It, it wasn't convenient for me. In the early 2000s, on my section of Lamb Creek, there were 13 boats on boat lifts in that creek. Today, there's three. And the reason is, is because they can't use the creek except for about an hour or two during daylight, during high tide. And you'll probably hear about that tonight. In 2012, um, I volunteered and formed the, an ad hoc committee. It was called the Lambs Creek Revitalization Committee. We had our first meeting right down the hall in, in the Pocosin Library. We had about 18 people show up. We put together a mission statement. We put together the survey sheets that you've referenced. And we started canvassing all the neighborhoods along Lambs Creek, both in York County and in Pocosin and we got good response. One of the questions was how much is it gonna cost me? We didn't know then. We still don't know today because the data we have is from back in 1995, the Army Corps of Engineers, that there's been a lot more silting in. Some of the ancillary channels may or may not get dredged. We have to talk to homeowners to decide that. One of the things that was brought up in the working group meeting is the ancillary channels aren't part of the dredge and they are part of the dredge at York County funded and put together. Um, and there's eight of them, three on, on the York County side and five on Pocosin side. In the, in the mid-15s, uh, I worked with Anna Drake up at York County and worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to update their uh, dredging plan find spoil sites, both there's a spoil site in Pocosin side and a, and a spoil site on the York County side. And I also uh, communicated and met with owners and residents along various other dredging projects, including Wormley Creek, Hampton River, Lynn Haven, and Lafayette Rivers in Norfolk. <coughs> so I've got background information on how those dredges came about and what the issues they uh, came up with and what, how they solved it. And they, they sold them in different ways and they funded them with different sources of money. So that's something you might want to consider. Um, in 2015, York County took a project, the dredging project to Mayor Hunt, <coughs> who decided it wasn't time to dredge any creeks in Pocosin. So that was a blanket statement. The revitalization of Lambs Creek was put on hold until 2021. Uh, when it was started to make in contact again with new homeowners. In that 2015 to 2021, there's been 30 to 40 new homeowners on both sides of the creek move in. Because of the pandemic, the committee didn't want to go out 
and interview these people. So we just kind of spent that, that time in hiatus. And then in 2021, we started up again. In, 20, in January of this year, I submitted the contact information that the mayor referenced that I, we, our, my committee did back in uh, 2015 timeframe, and we've updated it some with the new homeowners. And we provided that to the mayor back in January. To date, uh, I've got about 85 people on an email list, and I'm getting every time I send an update on what the status of this dredge is, I, I always get tens and dozens of, of compliments back about we really need this to, to get dredged. And I think you're seeing the support tonight. I think the majority of these people are going to tell you that they support dredging. So in wrapping up, I'd like to, uh, I agree that there are many questions associated with the dredging that need to be answered. Uh, but it should be no, should no surprise that a, a project this major with over 150 houses, uh, there's going to be a lot of questions. These questions can only be addressed by open dialogue by all parties, Pocosin, York County, the Army Corps of Engineers, VMRC, and most importantly, the affected homeowners. You're going to get some of that tonight, I'm sure. Uh, that's why it's vitally important for the council to approve the signing letter to York County and proceed to the next phase so we can work through these issues. I've worked for the past 10 years on this, on this dredging program. I've got a whole briefcase full of data I'm willing to share with anybody on the staff, uh, either tonight or at some future date. Now, quickly to uh, talk about some of the issues that came up in the working group meeting. Uh, your county is going to fund the engineering. They, they, that was what they brought to Mayor Hunt in 2015 because you only had one engineer at the time and she wasn't capable to run all your other projects and this new dredging project. So we presented it as your county would fund it, your county would do the engineering, and she would just watch so she could get smart on the process and how to lay out for any future canals that need to be dredged in the future. So that was a win-win for both sides. The other thing is about cost. We talked about $2 million. The cost is going to be split between York County and Pocosin because we share the creeks. The only cost that won't be shared is if an individual homeowner wants his boat dock or his lift dredged. He'll contract with the, contract with the, the contractor to do that portion. Another part um, was that somebody was worried about the piers. We're not going to dredge all the way out to the piers. There's a channel. It's either 24 feet wide or 30 feet wide. So it's well enough away from the piers. My piers on my boathouse go into the mud 25 feet. So taking 18 to 24 inches off the top is not going to affect the piers or the structure capability of the piers. Uh, channel dredging is included in, in the cost estimates that your county did. It's been in that way since 2015. Um, environmental impacts, that's a good question that you brought up because, and in your package, you show the, the drainage ditches from the streets. A lot of developments now have retention ponds. Back when these neighborhoods were built, they didn't. They just let all the street water run into the creeks and hopefully flow to the ocean. The upper part of Lambs Creek where I'm at doesn't have a lot of tidal flow. So the silt comes in from the you know, farmer field or from over on um, uh, the Yorktown Road in Pocosin. Everything drains into Lambs Creek at my end and essentially sits there. And you can go to the revetments that are coming in from the street and just see mounds of silt that's built up. Even at high tide, you only have maybe six inches of clearance. In response to the surveys, 90% of the people that responded, and we have nearly 100 respondents, said they were in favor of dredging. Some of them marked maybe on funding, whether they would fund it or not, because we didn't know the cost. My goal was to tell these people, my goal was to only raise taxes $500 a year. And if you could do that, that's what we would shoot for, and we would spread the money out. I'm not going to tell Pocosin how they should fund it. York County is looking at low, low zero-cost uh, bonds to fund it over a number of years. 
the, uh, and that's something that would reduce the cost burden, the tax burden on the York County side. There was a question raised that, well, if we do one creek, then everybody's gonna want it, uh, their creek dredged. It's taken 47 years between dredges that we're not even there or four years away, even if we say yes. So that's gonna be 50 years between dredges. Your county has, has planned a second dredge in 12 years. Personally, I'm, I don't think we need to do a dredge in 12 years, and we certainly don't need to pay for it up front for something that may or may not happen 12 years down the road. But for Pocosin, where you have a lot of creeks out there, you don't have to do one right after another. You take the first one where your city engineers <coughs> are gonna look over uh, your county's engineer's shoulder, learn how to do it, and then over the next how many years, you can prioritize which creeks get dredged <coughs> and space them out. And I don't see it's really gonna be an impact to your capital improvements program and your, your fire and police resources. It should be a different pot of money. Yeah, you made, somebody made a comment that city's not responsible. I think from an environmental standpoint, I think Pocosin and York County are responsible for keeping that water flow, which it does impact flooding. And I can't point to individual properties that do flood, but we heard at a meeting, I think in the last January uh, city council meeting, a resident came in and, and claimed that their property and their neighbor's property flooded. And I, again, on the special tax district, I, I don't want to comment on how you're going to pay for it and how you're going to divide up the money. That's a local thing for Pocosin. And, uh, I thank you for listening to me, and I thank you for having this meeting, Mayor. And hopefully you're getting good feedback, and I would recommend wholeheartedly that we sign the letter, take it to the next step. As, as Janet said, there's no commitment at this point to continue with the project, but at least everybody can get smarter on it. We can get answers to a lot of these questions that I heard tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. told by VIMS right off the top when they started this program to come over and they would teach me how to raise these horses and I would have cleaner water in the creeks. So I did that. As you all know, drudging, the horses are gone. They're dead. Right now I have 80,000, 18,000 culture horses. They were bought at $35 a thousand. Uh, I've got cages that cost somewhere in the neighborhood $2,800 for the men. It's a process, it's a quick process, but I'm probably the only one in here that lives off of the creek. Um, second thing is, I, the creek has lost at the point coming into the creek, the right and left hand side, the Causey Point and the Riggins Point. Since I've been there, they've probably lost 150 yards. And that's gonna continue. And if you drudge it, it's gonna be right back, so you better have something right behind it. The fourth thing is, why should I have to pay more tax if I can go and come in my boat, I have never been where I hadn't been able to go. I know that I was lucky. I, I, I was a Pocosa native, so I looked for deep water. Some of these people got big boats and two foot of water. Um, the, the boats that are 
the bigger boats up the creek. I've been living there, like I say, for 47 years. And the no wake sign was going to be taken up. A lot, a lot of people will use it, but there are four or five that's going to go wide open up there. And I've, I've seen it over and over and over. So I don't know what to do about it. But anyway, I just wanted to say that I've enjoyed this. I hope y'all will do the right thing. If y'all decide to go with it, I'm for it. But right now, I wouldn't do it. So. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. Sean Gorman. Sean. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak. My name is Sean Gorman. I live at 312 Chiquipin Orchard. Uh, the reason I came here tonight is I moved here about two years ago. I moved here in October of 2020. And in March of 2021, my son and I were out on my back dock and I was helping him fill up a pail of water and I fell in. I have never, well, there was one other time I've been scared in my life and that's when I was a teenager doing really stupid things. And I'd like to think I've grown up since then, but I was scared because I immediately was submersed in muck up to here. It took my son to run and get his sister and both of them to fabricate a rope to navigate around the pilings and to get me out, it took about an hour. I truly thought I was going to die. And the first thing I thought of is, I don't want my kids to see this. The second thing I thought of was, this is a public nuisance. Everywhere I've ever lived before, it was known you better dredge, not only for rainwater runoff, but for public safety. It's gonna happen sooner or later. The, the, the funds need to be allocated, whether it's because we're gonna dredge it or there's gonna be a huge lawsuit. God forbid if my children or someone else's children fall in there, they will likely die. It literally took me an hour. And if you think I'm lying, you can check with my neighbors who saw the whole thing go down, or you can come out to my house at any time, <clears throat> 312 Chinkma Pain, and you can jump in or even slowly get in. You will not get out on your own. It is a public nuisance. You guys have been on notice about this, and it's going to continue to be dangerous until something is done. I have heard some comments like, we don't own the water that flows in there. We don't own the basin. I think, yes, that is true. But Pocosin and York County have, for decades, thrown pure wastewater into that. Silt, farm waste, road waste. I've seen <coughs> a tire float down that comes through. It's, it's truly atrocious how it just runs off of both the streets in York County and Pocosin right into that waterway. And we've, we've heard from others saying, well, we've heard there's been floodings. I can show you right now on my phone, the last rain we have, I have metadata to show it exactly correlates to the last heavy rainfall we had. My yard was flooded up to 19 and a half feet from my back window. It was up to my deck and it was past that and I measured it was 19 and a half feet. I will show you these pictures. Every time there's heavy rains, it flows, that creek gets overflowed and it comes into our yards. So I, I, it's really disheartening to hear saying, hey, we're gonna listen to everyone, we're gonna hear what you have to say, but I don't support this. And that to me really bothered me. That's why we're here. We're members of this community. We're here to tell you how this is impacting us. And I truly believe one way or another, this is gonna take a lot of funds. Because if the water, I mean, if the roads were dangerous, you guys would anticipate lawsuits, right? We've all been using that creek, whether it's for recreation, to dump waste into it or not, we all have a hand in that. And if it's not fixed, someone will get injured and it will be bad and there will be lawsuits. It will be a liability. It is currently a liability. And not only that, but it's getting worse and worse. When it rains every time, the floods come up higher and higher. And sooner or later, you're gonna have people realize, why am I paying more in taxes? Why am I paying more in flood insurance to move here when really at the end of the day, I'm at more of a risk of flooding and my children die. So I would just ask you guys just to kind of look in and see what really are the real risks because I don't think those have been discovered as much. So thank you for your opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schoolman. Thank you. Cozzy, Ted, I saw you somewhere. <coughs> I'm Ted Cozzy. I've lived at uh, <coughs> 100 Darden Drive for 57 years, and I live on Lamb Street. Uh, <coughs> the district that you've determined to pay for the project you say has about uh, 106 or nine homes. <clears throat> Are you gonna require everybody on that whole list to pay whether they have a boat or not, or whether they even want a deep channel or not? That's my question. 
Do they all have to pay that 950 bucks? Mr. Causey, we're not going to do questions and answers. Sir? We're not going to do questions and answers. This is your turn to, to tell us what's on your mind. Okay, well, I just wonder, you know, because <clears throat> I, I think that all the people on the river don't have boats, and they're not all interested in dredging the channel, and I think that they should not be required to pay if they're not interested in having a boat and using it. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Lisa Rodriguez. Good to see you, Lisa. I had a thank long you. conversation with you this afternoon. I did. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you, City Council. Thank, thank you for your thoughtfulness that has gone into this and the discussion during the work session. Uh, my husband and I moved here about four years ago, and until yesterday, I lived right on Lambs Creek. I knew nothing of this project. So my only request, thank you, Ms. Andrews, is to simply ask the citizens who are affected by this what they want with full disclosure of what the options are. I think there's confusion about what is and what may be, and a lot of um, discussion and disclosure about how we move forward, I think would be very 